Welcome to Center Hacks. In this episode, we're going to talk about patient lists that auto-populate. So these are patients who, when they're admitted to you, will automatically come onto your list as long as somebody assigns it to you and will fall off your list once they're discharged. So stay tuned and we'll talk about this more. Hey everyone, in this episode of Cerner Hacks, we're going to talk about auto-populating patient lists. So this is a list where if a patient is assigned to you by either an emergency physician or by another transferring service, and they change MRP to you, that they will automatically appear on your list. You will see this isn't 100% foolproof, but it's pretty good at auto-populating when you need it to. Sometimes patients do fall off the list if they are switched to another service, but you still want to follow them. And if their patients are discharged, these patients will automatically fall off the list. For those reasons, I like to create my own custom list that I populate and I can have full control over who comes on the list and who comes off the list. It's just a better way for me to do it. But if you also want this list to be generated automatically, it's a, also a good double check. So the way we create this list is going to this the modify patient list function and let's go into new and then we're going to go to relationship and the types of relationship we want is in the visit relationships we will want admitting physician covering provider and consulting provider so those three things encounter types depending on what your role is in the hospital as a hospitalist here we will want patients in the emergency department as inpatient, ALC patients, residential patients. As far as locations is concerned, we go into locations and you will need to pick your hospital here. In my case, I'm gonna choose Lionsgate Hospital. Let's expand that. And I'm just going to pick the wards that I'll be covering, Let's say that, as well as PACU, okay. And next is the medical services. And I would pick everything except the ones that you're definitely not going to cross cover. So I generally will pick everything we, ha we have here. And in order to not overlap with other services, if there's things that you don't want showing on the list, then you won't pick that. For example, in our hospital, we still have some family practitioners that still uh, see their patients and we're not responsible for them. So I have not selected family practice. Otherwise, those patients may end up on my list and I do not want that. In our hospital, we also have hospice and palliative care. We again don't cross cover those patients. So I'm going to leave those unchecked. It's going to take me some time to select everything here except for the ones that we don't want. So I'm just going to do that and cut to the end. Okay, so I've selected everything that we could possibly cover and I did not select the ones that we don't want listed. So in my case, as a hospitalist in our hospital, we're not covering family practice. So you can see that that was unchecked. I also didn't check off hospice or palliative medicine or short stay hospice or short stay long term care because our service do not cover those patients and I don't want those patients populating my list. The last part is the discharge criteria and we only want patients that are have not been discharged and we will finish after we provide a name and we will call this my automated list. So we will finish that. We see the my auto list here and we will go OK. OK, so once you assign yourself as a consulting physician or a covering physician, these patients will automatically add it to your list if somebody else as you as MRP again these patients will be added to your list if patients are discharged then they will fall off your list automatically okay so hopefully that helps